Okay, we need to get our bumpers in here, and uh, we'll start with uh, kind of your typical uh, round bumper, and I think we actually do this with just a circle. So that shouldn't be too tough. Draw a circle on here. Uh, let's just call it uh, bumper. And uh, one of the first things we'll do is let's give it a little bit of a, a bevel effect. And let me fold these up so you can get a better idea of what we're doing. Okay, so let's set the, the quality to high. And let's adjust the distance and the blurring. Okay, let's take the strength down a little bit so it's not uh, so dark. All right, once you've got that, I'm gonna make it just a tad bigger. I'm gonna uh, stack one on top of the other. Okay, so you've got something like this, but uh, it's a little too overhead. So let's move this just up slightly like so. And uh, on our bottom most one, uh, let's go ahead and put a little bit of a glow down at the bottom. So uh, hit, uh, make it black and let's fold that up. We got that happening. And then I think you could even add a, a little bit of a, a drop shadow underneath that. Uh, so for this, yeah, we want something kind of like that. Uh, maybe take the strength down just a bit so it's not uh, so heavy. And let's spin it around a little bit. Obviously, you'd probably want to change this based on uh, where it actually is on the table. but. Uh, uh, not too shabby so far. Uh, I think what you could do is uh, on this uh, this upper one over here, add a glow to this as well. Let's make it kind of dark. And by kind of, I mean all the way dark. Set that to high. So you kind of just stack that on top of there. And uh, yeah, adding that darkness around it, it really almost makes it seem like it's, um, this is a, uh, like embossed into it almost, uh, and then of course you could uh, you could put some numbers on here. Uh, you could even make it a little bit bigger, maybe do something like that uh, to uh, make it back on that though. But uh, yeah, you know if you're gonna give people a hundred points for hitting this guy, of course you could write uh, one hundred on there. Let me just steal one of our pieces of text that we've already got. And where'd that copy to? So, you know, something like that. Uh, maybe change the angle just a bit. And also, too, think about the uh, type of animation you might want to do here. So, you know, you can take all of your elements. Uh, combine them together. Let's just call this bumper animation. Uh, double click inside of here now. And uh, if you do have animation inside of a movie clip, you can really easily export it by just right clicking. And um, it's getting cut off, but about three below where I'm at says export PNG sequence. And that'll export out the entire animation. Great little feature in Flash. So, you know, this would be kind of your, your usual state of it. Uh, maybe let's make this kind of a dark green instead of a black. And then uh, one over from that, this would be like your collision state. And uh, you know, at this point, you could just start colorizing it however you want. Uh, we could probably go over here to color effects. And uh, let's try tinting it initially, being kind of a hotter green maybe. Do something like that. Um, take the, this color. Uh, probably we should have made this into a symbol initially. Let's just call this 100 text. And at which point to go back to the first frame and then just replace that out too with that one. So then over here we could tint this to be maybe a, a nice white color, something that shows up. And then we could kind of animate our way back down to this. So I usually find it's it's good to sort of jump to the your brightest fa frame when you, it's you know the, for your initial collision state and then go kind of ease your way back down. So uh, to do that, um, 
uh, we'll use some simple tweens and uh, we need to separate each element onto its own layer so for example you take everything you've got over here and just go over here to distribute the layers and uh, when you do that um, just take everything that got distributed and just push them all out to this second frame so basically you've got you know this and this uh, and then you know, if you wanted, you could start this frame off too with all of them distributed to their individual layers as well. Probably the best thing we could have done, but that's okay. And uh, I hit F5 to extend out uh, more frames over here. I didn't actually add a keyframe though, so what I need to do is uh, hit F6, and that'll actually do, uh, put keyframes in there. And then I can just kind of walk back the animation back to its initial state. So I could take the tinting back down, and I could take the tinting back down on this, and then select anywhere in between these frames and just right click and go over here to create classic tween and you can see that's just gonna make it go back down. Now, of course I can change the state of this as well so for example or the position and things like that so for example I could maybe bump this up so it seems like it kind of bumps up when you when you run into it so like that and maybe even extend this out a little bit. Uh, you could also you know um, have the entire thing go up a little bit as well. I think that's maybe not the best idea. I'd say keep it in place, but move elements with, it, you know, inside of it. Uh, another thing we could do is, is um, adjust the uh, the filters as well. So, for example, our uh, drop shadow. Maybe, maybe let's try it. As, nah, I was gonna say try it with a little green on there, but. Let's at least uh, let's at least move it in just a little bit. So I'll do something like that. So at least it appears like it's it's also changing. So you get something like that happening. And uh, you could you could also uh, hold down the Option key and then just pull out those frames like this and do it again, right? And then over here change the states back to being untinted or maybe slightly tinted and then it's got kind of a flicker effect see how that maybe hopefully that show, that's showing up on the screen capture but how it kind of flickers back and forth and you know this is something that you could set up in the um, in Xcode where you um, you just kind of repeat the same frames over and over again and uh, what basically what you do is you just in the property list, uh, you, you list out the frame sequence that you want to display. So it doesn't have to be the same order that you export out these frames in. So for example, I could just say, go back and forth between these two frames for a while and then descend back down. But uh, you could do the same thing here in, in Flash and kind of export out unnecessarily the same frames over and over again. Uh, but you know, while we're kind of tinkering around, that's uh, that's fine. We can do that. So uh, again, you could select uh, two columns of frames and then just hit that Option key and just pull them back over. So now you can kind of see how that would look. And yeah, I think that's kind of cool. And by the way, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I don't think I mentioned how to play these through. Just hit the Return key on the keyboard, or you could hit uh, yeah, just the Return key is easiest. And as you're kind of scrubbing through here, you can also get a sense for kind of the timing of it. So if you want it to be really fast, scrub through faster. If you want it to be maybe be a slower effect like that, you could do that. So anyway, that's uh, one possible bumper. Another one we could do would be down here. Oh, and you know, before we get rid of that all together, let's, uh, let's copy this out. Kind of figure out some other places we might want it. Uh, you can definitely put them your bumpers underneath the uh, the rails. In terms of the kit, you can do that. So, you can kind of have the ball, you know, bang around a bunch of times in, underneath here. And, uh, so, don't think that this is unavailable space where your rail is at. And what's another good place for a bumper? Oh, you can do one over here by the water. Maybe a couple of these over here. And if you're going to do that, I'd say, hey, you tinted it as well. So let's play around with the hue. So maybe we got some sort of water bumpers. 
and in terms of uh, things we could illustrate, maybe like a little dock or something like that, jutting out that way, be sort of fun. Let's uh, let's do this. Oh, we can't really. Let's. Uh, I think we're gonna have to. Well, I hate to go and. <laughs> Here's what I'm getting at. I don't like that the drop shadows over there. So, to, yeah, this would be one of those cases where I'd really just need to duplicate this and then go into every frame of the um, animation that we had and change the drop shadow. So just for right now, let's just leave it as it is. Uh, although, you know, what would be kind of fun to, to try would be to tint it and see if uh, that doesn't really work for me. It's gonna see if maybe we could make it seem like that um, the drop shadow is just an extension of the the bumper showing through the water. Maybe with a darker blue. Ah, uh, nah. Okay, well you get the idea. So let's go and uh, let's do another bumper down here. Uh, this one triangular, and we'll just start with a triangle shape. I guess I'll uh, begin with a green, then we can just kind of tint it up from there if uh, if we don't like it. And again, as I mentioned before, you want to make sure that your bumpers um, aren't in the way of your flippers, okay? So you would not want to do something like this because then the flipper can't raise up all the way and basically aim and uh, your, your real pinball aficionados do not like that. Uh, so once you've got that shape in there, uh, go ahead and just uh, expand the fill. So maybe just try five for right now and that's going to round out those uh, Kind of the corners a little bit, uh, and that's going to be our initial shape. Let's uh, and, the, and let's just copy it again, and then this time around, uh, really give it an expanded fill. Maybe bump it up to like something like 25, and that'll be kind of the bottom layer. So let's go ahead and just uh, change the color, make it a little bit darker, and then I'll move this guy over top, and I'm, I'm going to just uh, put it up just a tad bit, right, to get something like this happening. And then I'll just call this uh, triangle bumper. And from here, we could uh, give it a little bit of a bevel, something like this. Take the strength down just a bit, though. And can you imagine what we'll do now? Probably that glow, right? That looks pretty good. Let's uh, let's do another one over here. Uh, let me flip around the bevel though. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So with these um, type bumpers, they they almost kind of have this like rubber band type thing going on right over here. So if you were going to do an animation for this, uh, like a collision animation, I would say uh, all you really got to do is to dive inside of here, right? And then make a, oh, you know what? Actually, don't do that yet. Step back over here. Make this into a symbol. So we'll call this animated bumper because I don't know that I want those same uh, bevel effects of, of applied to what I'm about to do. So now double click inside of here and you can see that you've still got all those filters within the symbol itself and then make a new layer, drag it below. Let's uh, add about five or six more frames out this way. And then, so this is our kind of base frame for it. Then hit F7 over here. So you're just creating a blank keyframe, which we're going to draw into in just a moment. And then I'll just grab a stroke and set the color to uh, white for it and so what will happen and let's make this a bit thicker maybe 10 so the ball you know kind of collides anywhere over here right and then what you do is you just kind of send out this little kind of rubber bandy thing it pops out and then we'll just descend that back into the into the symbol and uh, there's a couple ways you could do that just I mean it's not a lo long effect so you could just uh, keyframe it a few times uh, but you can shape tween uh, your lines so for example I could just move this down here and then right click go over here to shape tween and you can see it's gonna figure out oh 
I know, I know what to do with that. And then, of course, let's um, blank out that last keyframe. So you get kind of this thing happening. Uh, I'd say probably even less frames than that, right? And as you're doing that, you could also could maybe kind of flicker some of the colors over here, It'll light it up some, uh, maybe hit F7. Let's see if we could. Add kind of another triangle on top of here. And I'm just going to hit F6 a couple times. So get rid of it, get rid of it. So the effect is something like that, right? Uh, but let's uh, hit F8 on that. We'll make it into, into a symbol and probably add a bit of a glow to it. There we go. So copy that and just get rid of that one that's still got the shape on it and then just paste that over there. And probably the one in the middle, if I was gonna flicker it, I'd still leave it in there. So probably take the alpha down so you can kinda still make it out. So it does something like that. And then yet again, take the alpha down. And let's see. You might even want to just copy this and just put it on the, the base frame for it too. But then on this one, kind of take the lighting down, or the glow, I should say. So it's still there all the time. Okay, and then just get rid of that guy since we already did all the animation. Let's just uh, copy this one over to there. And by the way, you can always hit uh, Command and uh, Enter or Control Enter and uh, kind of test out your whole table at once with um, just all the animations <laughs> looping through there. Uh, strange effect, but uh, you know, kind of gives you an idea of, uh, well, yeah, gives you an idea of what, <laughs> what would happen. So there we go. We got uh, some bumpers to work with. And of course, well, you know, don't be afraid when you get done with things to uh, just uh, change the color around and see what might happen? You know, did I have the right colors initially? Do I, is there something I like better? And a lot of times I'll do this and um, end up with whatever I tinted to. So like, you know, looking at it now, yeah, I kind of do like the orangey effect. Let's see what that would look like. Certainly pinball tables are not afraid to have lots of uh, different colors, that's for sure. Okay, let's, uh, let's pause this video and we'll uh, or stop it and uh, come back and do something new in the next one.